Welcome back to the desert, everyone. I'm uh, so glad you've decided to join me for this paint session. As you may have noticed, um, I am in a different location. Um, being in Arizona, it's uh, about 25 million degrees in my garage, um, which is where my workstation is, my workbench. Uh, so I decided to make just a painting area inside. Uh, so I used just some uh, dollar store uh, foam board and stuck a nice poster blueprint of the Millennium Falcon up there and I'm ready to go. So today I'm gonna uh, do some painting as I talked about. Um, I ended up with two sets of brushes. I don't know why. I I think one of them is, is sable. The other ones I think are synthetic. I don't know. Uh, people say that sable's the best, so I got some of those. Um, the paints I have, they've been sitting for, uh, for a year. Um, as with many of you, I was waiting for parts and I did not want to really get into doing anything until I actually had everything because I didn't want to get stopped uh, when I didn't want to stop. Uh, so I'm just kind of playing around with the paints. Um, in the past, whenever I've built models before, uh, any washes I've made, uh, I've always done myself, uh, just using you know lots of thinner, etc. Um, this set that I bought did come with um, a bunch of washes, so I figured I'd play around with them. Uh, different dilutions to see how it flows, see what uh, you know what thickness it ends up with. Uh, because as you know, this the holds are filthy, um, and so I'm just going to spend a lot of time making them look really, really dirty. Uh, here's a picture uh, that I took when I was watching uh, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, it looks really, really dirty. I think the wash that I'm using is, I think it's a strong tone, I believe. There's also a dark tone, uh, which is more brown, uh, which I kind of like too, because it does look a little bit like you know oil and grease and things like that. This is more black. Uh, but I figured I'd start with this and uh, maybe add some more uh, different you know, layers later on. Next is the, uh, uh, what's it called? I can't even remember right now. I totally spaced. Uh, circuitry Bay, where the Han kiss lay, as you saw in the little picture I saw before. Um, there's no, uh, of course, real good images of uh, anything in the movie. Um, so I just I found a, a picture of somebody who looks like they built a, uh, a full-scale mock-up. I don't know, maybe it was Disney or something like that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and go with that. I did like some of the colors in there. There were some, a little bit of silvers and some whites and some reds. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, I mentioned in one of the previous videos a way of maybe containing the uh, the fibers is to maybe cut a straw down the center and use that. It works okay. Um, it was a little bit tricky. It did curl up like I expected. Uh, but it, it is, you know, I think next time maybe rather than doing the uh, the fibers first, which I know it's recommended, especially if you're going to paint, uh, because that way you won't be you know, filling up the holes. Um, it is a bit of a pain <laughs> to deal with them, not just them hanging out the back, but also um, in the front, like when you try to do any dry brushing or anything, everything gets caught up. So I, I have been trying to, uh, you know, cut them shorter and shorter, but still leaving myself enough that I can uh, cut them off when I'm done. So here I'm just uh, painting some of the extra pieces that I have. Uh, again, I did order a lot of extra parts, uh, basically as much as I could afford. Um, I do want to do as much as possible on this Falcon. Um, and yes, I'm making a huge mistake right now. Um, I remember reading somewhere that the inspiration for the nav console um, and uh, some of the, uh, the parts of the Millennium Falcon came from uh, like the missile silos. Uh, during the Cold War. Um, so I looked up some pictures of those and they tended to be basically white and silver. So that was the image I had in my head. Um, I didn't look at any other pictures. Uh, so I just painted it white. And you'll see later that yes, I realized that I made a mistake uh, and I will fix it. Uh, these pipes are kind of cool. This is all the extra ones that came um, with the shape waste parts uh, that I ordered. Uh, most of them go on this wall, the starboard wall. This is one part I know that's definitely uh, not gray or black. It's like white or silver. Uh, I'm doing it white. Uh, that way I can uh, make it nice and dirty as well. I think I can make it look like the, uh, the part in the movie. A 
I'd forgotten actually how strangely relaxing uh, doing all this detail painting is. I think I probably spent, I don't know, two or three days, eight, nine, ten hours, uh, just sitting here doing this. Uh, I do have the luxury of uh, having a little bit of free time right now, um, so I've been spending a lot of time listening to uh, ebooks on Audible uh, and just relaxing and, and painting. It's been very nice. It's been, it's been fun. Uh, I do tend to go over things a lot. I've, I've really taken a shine to uh, painting with washes, uh, as you may have seen from the um, Mark Rogan figure that I painted. Um, it's nice because there's you don't make any big mistakes, and it, if there is a slight error, it's just one layer, and you can easily cover it up again uh, or fix it. So I really like doing that. Just nice thin down paint, especially now with the paint thin, as you can see the part that I'm doing right here. Uh, with the paint slightly watered down, uh, it flows into the recesses nicely um, and fills them up nicely. So it's nice. It, it, it is thin, uh, so a lot of times I do need to go back and do maybe a second or a third layer. Uh, but it's really nice for all the detail work. Uh, it helps the paint flow uh, and it just makes life a lot easier. I think most of the hoses, which I don't know, to me look like air hoses, uh, tend to be white. Um, then it, I think some of the electrical conduits look like they're silver. I was trying, while painting this, I was trying to come up with a color scheme uh, in my head so that I would know, you know what part would be what color, but I can't. I don't know. I found, I looked up pictures, I watched the movies again. Um, just trying to find a uh, you know method to their madness, I could not find one. Lots of cool colors, lots of stuff. I found some copper color pipes, some brown pipes, silver, white, blue, red. Uh, so yeah, just take your time. If you do want to paint it, even re you know remotely close. Again, I'm not going for a total, exact mirror, you know frame by frame copy of the um, of the one used in the movie I think that would just give me a headache uh, it would be fun but I just I, that, no, no thank you uh, not this time I just want to make it look good so I am using trying to do you know most of the colors uh, the same or similar uh, to what you see in the movie uh, but if there's a mistake that's okay as long as it, it looks as long as it's not glaring if it's not a glaring error I'm fine with it Lots of pipes, lots and lots of pipes. Nice thing is about these uh, these parts that I bought off Shapeway, the detail is uh, actually very good. So a lot of these pipes, especially the, uh, the ones that I'm painting white, uh, are ribbed. Um, so using the thin paint, uh, like I mentioned, it's nice because it helps flow in between. Also by thinning out the paint, um, it does not uh, fill in the gaps or fill in the cracks. So it does not take away from the detail, uh, which is kind of nice. Yes, I know, it's wrong. But the nice thing again is that I can fix it. I know how to do it. Still to repaint it. I could have gone back out to the garage to the spray booth um, and sprayed it gray again, but I was like, nope, this is my, uh, I guess this is my penance for uh, making the mistake the first time. I'll just repaint it by hand. Uh, next thing I wanted to do was in the, uh, the maintenance pits. Uh, the, you notice that some of the pipes have uh, some a uh, black and yellow and red uh, stripes on them. Uh, I know there's a black one. I think I remember seeing a different color in there. But either way, I like the idea of uh, some different colors in there because uh, if you are painting uh, the Falcon, you'll notice that most of the paint is weathering uh, and dirtying things up. There's not a whole lot of color, so I, I wanted to add some uh, in those uh, in those bays as well. I did try to tape it off, but of course, since the uh, since those pipes that I put in are curved, uh, taping around the curve, of course, is next to impossible. So I just decided to freehand it. Um, and after you know, dirtying it up, 
and, and making it look nice, all Millennium Falcon-esque. Um, I don't think the uh, the hand painted lines stand out too much. I think it looks fine. My opinion. Just doing some highlights now. Again, I spent a lot of time making them nice and dirty. Now I'm trying to just highlight some of the sections. Um, I'm kind of torn about wear, wear and tear. Um, I'm also a Star Trek fan as well as Star Wars. And if you notice in Star Trek, of course, uh, everything is always immaculate. There's no wear, there's no tear, there's no nothing. Everything is spotless, as it should be. If you have that technology to basically make anything you want, then everything should be materials that you make the ship out of why would they wear why would the paint come off why would it even be painted why not have the, the color just built right in so the same kind of thing uh to me goes with the, the millennium falcon i understand that that han's a bit of a slob and it is really messy uh, but looking around and looking at the pictures again a lot of it is dirt there's not a whole lot of wear at least that i that i can say I, I, there might be um i am going to do some on the floors just because in my mind the floors need to have some wear on there. If you're running around back and forth, and especially as much as Han uh, and Chewie run around in the in the Falcon trying to fix things, um, but there's got to be some wear and tear on the floor somewhere. Uh, so I'll work on that later. I'm just, just debating what to do, uh, how to do it, whether to do uh, the hairspray mask or whether to use some chipping paint or to just use a sponge and, uh, and some silver paint and, and dab some on slightly. Not sure. Uh, here, this is another, uh, like I was mentioning before, uh, reason why I don't like having the fibers in there in the first place. They get in the way right now. Uh, trying to paint these little panels, uh, if the fibers weren't there, it would be a little bit easier. So uh, again, I think for the cockpit, I'm going to uh, not do all the painting, but maybe do majority of the painting, like the black panels. Um, on the cockpit wall, well, there's some red ones in the in the gunner's turrets as well, um, and maybe do some light dry brushing to highlight some of the uh, the extra additional buttons and, and bumps and lumps and stuff in the cockpit, um, and then I'll install the the fiber because it's a bit of a pain dealing with all these pieces with the fibers hanging out. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So I think I want to try to think of a, a different way to do it next time. Uh, I realize that, you know, the painting, again, I'm going to have to spend time uh, punching out the holes. But the thing is, I have to punch out the holes anyway. Um, even after soaking it in acetone, I still have to go through with, you know, the guitar string and go through everyone, especially in the cockpit, the cockpit that I have. Uh, there's one little section there. It looks like a, a bank of buttons, basically. I don't know, it's probably 10 by eight or something 10 by six 10 by seven maybe so 60 or 70 holes uh, just in that one section uh, and i would like to have fibers going into each one the holes are there i paid for it i bought it because of the fibers so i want to use all of them here i'm uh, i'm painting the uh the nice colorful stripes on uh, on the pipes on the starboard wall i didn't even think about masking these I'm just going freehand. They're tiny. And the pipes are ribbed, so I think even masking them off, it would just uh, it would just run through anyway. Yeah, and they so anybody who's uh, who's worn the white tube gym socks <laughs> with the red and black bands or red and yellow bands or whatever color bands on top, this so reminds me of those painting gym socks. Adding some more, uh, just some detail. Both the uh, the fore and aft walls, uh, or spars, or whatever you want to call them, um, have some color on them. Um, and when you start painting your Falcon, you'll notice that most of the painting you're doing is is gray and black and silver. So. There's a chance to do some red and blue, so I'm doing it. Uh, and I noticed that if you, in the movie you can see uh, red and blue pipes uh, along uh, some of the girders. 
So yeah, so here's what's what's been done so far. Uh, the maintenance uh, base, the pits uh, down below. Again, I added a little, uh, just a blue stripe, or sorry, red stripe and a yellow stripe. Uh, I added some uh, red and blue piping along these. This is the back of the nav console wall, starboard wall, port wall. Circuitry bay. Put together. Maintenance pits, the top part of it, with the LEDs. Next to the little black stripe, the bunk, the main hold. Added some weathering, you can see on the inside. I just put the weathering on. Um, I still need to highlight it, do some more details. I'm working on it, I know. It still looks a mess, but it's getting there. Gym socks. This is the uh, the floor that I bought uh, off Shapeways so I can have, add the pits to it. There's the finish hold. No, I'm just kidding. As you know, that's, that's the one that, that's the stock hold. That's the one the kid comes with. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you uh, for the next episode.